Romans have abandoned Britain, leaving it open to the twin threats of civil war and Saxon invasion. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host, Liam, aka Hembar. Today I'll be doing a spoiler-free review of Rosemary Sutcliffe's The Lantern Bears. Lantern Bears is book three in the Roman Britain trilogy, if you read it that way. It is also part of the Dolphin Ring cycle, and while the first two books I reviewed are books one and two, this is often put at the number four spot in the uh, Dolphin Ring cycle. There is a one in the third spot, which came out in 1980, while this book came out in 1959. That's called Frontier Wolf. I have not yet read that one, but I would probably t will at some point because I'm a big fan of Sutcliffe. I do enjoy her adult novels more. I think if you're a big fan of Arthurian stuff, you should read her Sword at Sunset. But this one does connect more with her Arthurian as well, which is awesome, and it actually probably makes it my favorite of the three. The first one takes place during the height of the Empire. The second one takes place during the Tetrarchy. And this one is later, of course. So we have um, Aquila, who is a soldier during the sunset of Rome's time in Britain. He has a sister named Flavia. He it deals with the conquering of um, kind of just of Britain and slavery as well. It reminds me some of uh, Dor Loman and the Children of Huron by Tolkien, if you read that. It deals with the Saxons and the Britons. And again, of course, Saxons are the bad guys here. Uh, funnily, I used to think, um, I used to read stuff like this, and I used to think that the Saxons are bad and dumb. And, you know, generally when I, with my own studies that I do, you know, for school and whatnot, uh, chiefly with Saxon language, right, is because, you know, English is as de descended from that, you know what I mean? For, in Britain, you know, it does get Germanicized. Um, so, I don't know, it's just kind of funny. I don't think all Saxons are dumb anymore. But in this story, they are the villains. Anyway, so people like Vortigern and Hengius and Horsa are present, which is pretty cool. Um, <laughs> there's some cool quotes in this one, actually. And there's one, uh, this one spans more time than the previous books as well. This plot is Aquila's life against the Saxons rather than a single short quest. Ambrosius and Artorius from Sword of Sunset set are present. It is a prequel of sorts to that novel, though... One that also has events following Aquila rather than Artos from Sword of Sunset, so it kind of aligns with it well. But this is kind of a young adult adventure, while Sword of Sunset's more of an adult novel focusing on Artos, who's King Arthur. Uh, this one is much more melancholy than the first two books in the series. You could probably imagine, right? Is this society as he knows it? His, you know, his world is just collapsing, and again, slavery is involved as well. So it's it's definitely a lot more melancholy and. Uh, it has some good parts, though, and I enjoyed it, right? Because the best books are the ones that make you sad, but also lift you up in the end, I think. Anyways, I'll catch you next time.